Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. You see, I tried to do a free Doom review, but for some reason, well, it was still uploading when I made the Rest in Peace Ronnie Ani Edwards video, and it hasn't uploaded at all. Like, I have no- it doesn't even show on my video, so I'm probably gonna have to redo that one. Um, sorry. <laughs> but anyway, uh, today I wanted to read, um, uh, for a video since I was bored. I'm gonna be doing these randomly. <laughs> Um, I'm just, I'm going to decide to stick with a random upload schedule, um, for my channel because I feel like it's just too much work to have to do a specified one because usually I'm doing something else and so I, um, skip out on it or I forget to do it, um, because this whole YouTube thing is, well, surprisingly kind of new to me. I've never had this kind of responsibility, so, yeah, um, but anyway... Let's get on with this. Um, <laughs> today we're doing um, a Star Wars Legends New York Times bestseller, Death Troopers by Joe Schreiber. I've already read this once, and I um, was going to read this t uh, another time, but I'm like, hey, th this time while I read it, I can read with um, um, read on the channel, and so yeah. So without further ado, let's do this. Me. This is Legends, by the way, and they did not make this canon. Yes, they made Death Troopers themselves canon. Um, they made the actual, um, you know, um, thing canon, but they didn't make this story canon. The Death Troopers, um... Like, now they're called Undead Troopers, to distinguish them from the Rogue One Death Troopers. But the Undead Troopers have a different origin this time. I don't know what they have, but yeah, it's a different origin, so... Yeah. I, I, I still want to see this story get canon. But of course, Disney's probably not going to do that, since Star Wars is family-friendly now. <laughs> Which kind of sucks, but okay. Hey, hopefully the movies will get better. Okay, anyway... <laughs> <clears throat> well, I'm gonna get a lot of dislikes, aren't I? Um, Dramatis Personae. It's basically going, um, you know, through all the characters. Or a Miss Prisoner, Delphanian Male. Jareth Sartorius, Captain of the Guard, Imperial Prison Barge, Purge, Human Male. Kale Longo, Teen Prisoner, Human Male. Trig Longo, Teen Prisoner, Human Male. Waste to one B surgical droid. Zahara Cody, Chief Medical Officer, Imperial Prison Barge Purge, human female. Our Miss is like the antagonist in this story, and like basically, well, uh, yeah, he's like an antagonist. Jareth Sartorius is one of the main characters. He's sort of like a protagonist, but at the same time, kind of an antagonist, I guess. Um, Kale and Trig are two protagonists. Waste is kind of like a side character, and Zahara Cody is also a, a, a protagonist. Did I say Kale, Longo, and Trig are antagonists? Because if I did, I'm wrong. <laughs> They're protagonists. A long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. One, Purge. The nights were the worst. Even before his father's death, Trig Longo had come to dread the long hours after lockdown, the shadows and sounds and the chronically unstable gulf of silence that drew out in between them. Night after night, he lay still on his bunk and stared up at the dripping durasteel ceiling of the cell in search of sleep or some acceptable substitute. Sometimes he would actually start to drift off, floating away in that comforting sensation of weightlessness only to be rattled awake, heart pounding, throat tight, stomach muscles sprung and fluttering, by some shout or a cry, an inmate having a nightmare. There was no shortage of nightmares aboard the Imperial Prison Barge, Purge. Trig didn't know exactly how many prisoners the Purge was currently carrying, 
He guessed maybe 500, human and otherwise, scraped from every corner of the galaxy, just as he and his family had been picked up eight standard weeks before. Sometimes the incoming shuttles returned almost empty. On other occasions, they came packed with squabbling alien life forms and alleged rebel sympathizers of every stripe and species. There were assassins for hire and sociopaths, the likes of which Trigg had never seen. Thin-lipped things that cackled and sneered in seditious languages that, to Trigg's ears, were little more than clicks and hisses. Every one of them seemed to harbor its own obscure appetites and personal grudges. Personal histories blighted the shameful secrets and obscure vendettas. Being cautious became harder. Soon you needed eyes in the back of your head, which some of them actually possessed. Two weeks earlier in the mess hall, Trigg had noticed a tall, silent inmate sitting with its back to him, but watching him nonetheless with a single raw red eye in the back of its skull. Every day the red-eyed thing seemed to be sitting a little nearer. Then one day, without explanation, it was gone. Except from his dreams. Sighing, Trigg levered himself up on his elbows and looked through the bars onto the corridor. Gin Pop had cycled down to minimum power for the night, edging the long gangway in permanent gray twilight. The Rodians in the cell across from his had gone to sleep or were feigning it. He forced himself to sit there, regulating his breathing, listening to the faint echoes of the convict's uneasy groans and murmurs. Every so often a mouse droid or low-level maintenance unit, one of hundreds occupying the barge, would scramble by on some pre-programmed errand or another. And, of course, below it all, low and not quite beneath the scope of hearing, was the omnipresent thrum of the barge's turbines gnashing endlessly through space. For as long as they'd been aboard, Trigg still hadn't gotten used to that last sound, the way it shook the purge to its framework, rising up through its legs and rattling his bones and nerves. There was no escaping it, the way it undermined every moment of life, as familiar as his own pulse. Trigg thought back to, be, to sitting in the infirmary just two weeks earlier, watching his father draw one last shaky breath and the silence afterward as the medical droids disconnected the biomonitors from the old man's ruined body and prepared to haul it away. As the last of the monitors fell silent, he'd heard the low, steady thunder of the engines, one more unnecessary reminder of where he was and where he was going. He remembered how that noise had made him feel lost and small and inescapably sad. <clears throat> Some special form of artificial gravity that seemed to work directly against his heart. He had known then, as he knew now, that it really only meant one thing, the ruthlessly grinding effort of the Empire consolidating its power. Forget politics, his father had always said. Just give them something they need, or they'll eat you alive. <clears throat> and now they've been eaten alive anyway, despite the fact that they'd never been sympathizers. No more than low-level grifters scooped up on a routine Imperial sweep. The engines of tyranny ground on, bearing them forward across the galaxy towards the remote penal moon. Triggs sensed that noise would continue, would carry on indefinitely, echoing right up until... Trigg? It was Kale's voice behind him, unexpected, and Trigg flinched a little at the sound of it. He looked back and saw his older brother gazing back at him, Kale's handsomely rumpled, Sleep-slackened sleep face, just a ghostly three-quarter profile suspended in the cell's room. Kale looked like he was still only par partly awake, and unsure whether or not he was dreaming of this. What's wrong? Kale asked, a drowsy murmur that came out. What's wrong? Trigg cleared his throat. His voice had started changing recently, and he was acu acutely aware of how it broke high and low when he wasn't paying strict attention. Nothing. You worried about tomorrow? Me? Trigg snorted. Come on. It's okay if you are. Kale seemed to consider this and then uttered a bemused grunt. You'd be crazy not to be. You're not scared, Trigg said. Dad would never if I'll go alone. No. The word snapped from his throat with almost painful, ang painful angularity. We need to stick together. That's what Dad said. You're only 13, Kale said. 
Maybe you're not, you know, 14 next month. Trig felt another flare of emotion at the mention of his age. Old enough. You sure? Positive. Well, sleep on it. See if you feel different in the morning. Kale's enunciation was already beginning to go muddled as he slumped back down on his bunk, leaving Trigg sitting up with his eyes still riveted to the long, dark concourse concor outside the cell. Gin Pop, that had become their no longer new home. <coughs> Sleep on it, he thought. And then that exact moment, miraculously, as if by power of suggestion, Sleep actually began to seem like a possibility. Trick lay back and let the heaviness of his own fatigue cover him like a blanket, superseding anxiety and fear. He tried to focus on the sound of Kale's breathing, deep and reassuring, in and out, in and out. Then somewhere in the depths of the levels, an inhuman voice wailed. Trigg sat up, caught his breath, and felt a chill tighten the skin of his shoulders, arms, and back, crawling over his flesh millimeter by millimeter, bristling the small hairs on the back of his neck. Over in his bunk, the already sleeping Kale rolled over and grumbled something incoherent. There was another scream, weaker this time. Trigg told himself it was just one of the other convicts, just another nightmare rolling off the all-night assembly line of the nightmare factory. But it hadn't sounded like a nightmare. It sounded like a convict, whatever life form it was, was under attack. Or going crazy. He sat perfectly still, squeezed his eyes tight, and waited for the pounding of his heart to slow down. Just please slow down. But it didn't. He thought of the thing in the cafeteria, the disappeared inmate whose name he'd never know, watching him with its red staring eye. How many other eyes were on him that he never saw? Sleep on it. But he already knew there would be no more sleeping here tonight. So, well, that was the first chapter of Death Troopers, and if you liked that, well, I suggest subscribing because you're going to get a whole lot more of that. Um, in fact, let's see how many more chapters there are. Contents. So there's one. There's 43 more chapters. You're going to get a lot more of this. You're... You're gonna get a lot more of this, so I suggest subscribing, going to my Discord, my, my Discord, um, it's on Discord, and, yeah, um, boom, uh, <laughs> so, bye, please subscribe.